Hello, Admiral Thrawn here, making another Let's Mod video, this time going over unit cards, so that should be fun. Specifically, we're going into how you can make good-looking unit cards, and what goes into that, etc, etc, it should be fun. Yeah, so when I first started making unit cards for Medieval 2, I would take a screenshot in-game on the grassy plain battlefield and then use the eraser tool to erase around it. And let me tell you now, that is a fucking terrible idea. Never do that. That's awful. It's horrible. They look terrible, and it takes an absurd amount of time. Instead, the trick is this. First off, you got to down download this thing here called, uh, like the, I believe it's called GOAT, and uh, you, you can get a download from Total War Center. Um, I'm not sure if I'll put a link in the description, but you can, if you just Google to, um, Medieval 2 Total War Anim Animerge, that's like what you want, or like maybe Medieval 2 Total War Goat or something. You'll find it. So basically, it's this nice little toolbox, toolbox here. So you click on this toolbox. You're going to get a lot of invalid nonsense or whatever, but you have all these functions here. And the important one we care about right now is called Animerge. Basically, what this does is it takes an animation file from Medieval 2, and it combines it with another file. Let me just make sure. One second. Am I? Uh, <clears throat> good. I, the, you can see the mouse. Sorry, just making sure. So yeah, this here is called Animerge, and it basically takes an MS3D file for a unit and merges it with its uh, requisite uh, animation. So you also need to download the Medieval, Medieval 2 Total War Animations Pack, which contains all of these uh, .cis files here for like Bowman and whatnot. And what you want to do is you want to find one that sounds like the kind of pose you want the unit to be in, like say um, Celebrating or Fire Aim is generally a good one. And you're going to want to copy that and paste it into your current folder. In my case, uh, I already have them pasted in. I'm using, uh, I have like uh, my Bowman attack missile, crossbow advance, javelin attack missile, all that sort of stuff. And so uh, I have a uh, horse rider javelin, stuff like that. And so basically I have all these animations here. These are .cis files. And I have my milkshape 3D files. Here I'm going to be doing these to the mountain clans of the Vale to try and make the unit cards for them. So let's uh, look at the uh, the Black Ears first. So we I have my uh, unit model. Actually, let's not do Black Ears. Now let's do let's do uh, painted dogs. Yeah. So I have my uh, unit model here, the painted dogs. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select and emerge. I'm going to select the painted dogs there, and then I'm going to pick the uh, mace advance, uh, because they have basically a mace, and they should be advancing into the pose. And this doesn't matter for inch per second, I'm just going to put 5, but it doesn't matter. And basically what this has done is I now have the painted dogs in their correct pose, or at least they should be. Uh, I think you can see it if you open... You, you want to uh, next open up this thing called Blender. It's a free 3D modeling software. It's what I use to make all my new models for um, like Total War games. And so you're going, we're going to Import, Milkshape 3D, Petty King's Units. Yeah, there we go. So now, as you can see, they are currently in their sort of cool attacky pose. And so basically this is what we want here. We want them to look, be in the cool pose. You can also see down here on this little slider thing, this is the actual animation. I don't know how to make animations, so don't ask me to make a video on that, but you can sort of alter where they are in the animation with this. So I'm, I'm thinking, um, you, you first you want to get them into a cool looking pose. Like I think this looks like a pretty good pose for them, for the unit cards. What you then want to do is go into Blender, open up this little sidebar thing, go to Display, and select Only Render. So now it's a solid gray background, and just the unit here in the front. Now you're going to right click on them, hit tab, and that basically lets you uh, select their various body parts. And so you go over to here, this little upside down triangle here, for groups, and now you can select the club and the shield. Now the club and the shield, we're going to then select their texture. Oh, by the way, you, what you want to do is you want to have your window here for viewing the model here, this is going to be your texture window. I'm forget, I actually kind of forget how to do this. I set it up for default so that the texture window is always this texture window. But the, yeah, the, the, there is a way of making it so that the texture window is like right here. And so you're going to go image, open image to select the texture for the background of that, uh, for the texture of these models here. Image, open image, Petty King's units, uh, house provincial, house clans, Clans diff. So this is the attachments thing. 
And so now as you can see, the, the mace here, like with the, like the spiked club and the shield, now have their correct texture. You can now say Control i which selects the opposite of what you've currently selected, and all that, kind of, that way you have, don't have to select all the stuff over here. Um, image, Open Image, Petty King's Units, House Provincial, Clans, Clans GDS. This is the Clans texture file here, as you can see, which has all of their, uh, their stuff. Tab again. So now we have our unit in his cool pose running forward with the spiky club. So now what we're going to do is we're going to print screen. And now we go over to GIMP, which is the image editing, editing software that I use. So we're going to say control paste, move it over here. And so now we have this guy's model here. Now we're going to select the uh, magic wand tool. And the important thing is this, make sure the threshold is set to zero. See. The threshold is basically how much, how close, like in terms of selecting colors, how close it's willing to be. So if I were to set the, set the threshold like to 95 or whatever, I would be selecting basically all of the grayish stuff in this entire image. If it's set to zero, it only selects this exact same color. And since the background is all the exact same color, that's like, that I want that. I want to basically only select the background and none of the units here. So I select that. I then add an alpha channel, I already have here, but I make sure that there's an alpha channel, which basically means transparency, and I hit delete. And so I basically just deleted all the stuff around him. I also got to grab this little bit of background there, and that little bit there. So now I've deleted all the stuff around him. Now I'm going to grab him, control copy, select that, delete. And this is going to be the unit card base here. You, just, you can just copy a unit card out of the unit cards folder or whatever. I'm going to hit control paste. I'm going to scale him down to something smaller. I'm going to put him there. That looks like it should be good. And it looks kind of shitty at this point here because he looks like it's, it's bigger and it's, it's expanded and also the unit card doesn't look very good. But uh, Hold on, I think it, it will improve itself in time. I believe these here are mm, painted dogs. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, that the, 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 this here is the uh, the units like the, the the same thing you use for the for the unit description and all that. So you got to use the same name to use there. Now I've got this. I'm going to Control Copy, and then I'm going to get rid of all of that. Go to Data UI units and then I'm putting all of my units into mercs and all because that's how I make it so you can like every faction has access to every unit and I'm going to control paste them there so now the, the unit card should be in game let's see if it is and it's a crash I still haven't figured out why it crashes occasionally when you first start up the game and all I'm not sure what's up with that I think it could have to do with uh, evil demons that have infiltrated our computers and are working to, to sabotage us and our country from the inside but yeah, oh, by the way, another fun thing is this. Since the wall is on the campaign map, I added a battlefield here at the wall. Um, let's say we're going to be in House Royce here to make sure that it works. Uh, and then let's make you House Baratheon. And then oh, well, a couple other things I want to show off here. First off, up here you can select the roster types and all. Now, it used to be you could just select faction rosters and faction rosters along with mercenaries with Era 2. Now, I've also added something called the region rosters. Now, I haven't got it working for the Vale yet, but for the Stormlands, you can see pretty soon. Well, and then uh, you can see soon. Basically, it means that if you select region rosters, you can, you can basically pick any units from your current quote-unquote kingdom, that being the Reach, the Stormlands, or whatever. So if you're playing as the Starks, you can select Bolton units if you select region rosters here. Now, the upside of that is that if you want to have like a civil war between Lannisters versus Lannisters, you can have that in these kind of in these kind of battles. You can basically just select region rosters and then have a different faction select your Lannister troops. And then finally, all is broken because the medieval two total war hard coded limits and all. So a lot of you were having trouble where you'd select all, thinking it would work and it would crash. That has to do with hard coded limits on number of units that you can display here. It's broken. It happens. I don't know what to fix it. Sorry. Uh, and then but yeah, so we're gonna select region rosters. Next, and next. So yeah, these here are the Stormland units, and uh, I, I want... No, I'm House Royce. You're these guys, yeah. Yeah, so these here are the uh, the Stormland units. As you can see, I just read it all of the unit cards, and I think they look pretty nice. This is basically the past hour or two of work that I've been doing. And yeah, the upside there is that I basically got um, Game of Thrones on audiobook, so I'm just listening to that as I go along. 
And anyways, the veil, as you can see, I have not done the unit cards yet, and for some reason, uh, these guys are not showing up as the unit, having the unit card. Let's go back and double check and see what's wrong. So, the units themselves are called... So I got black ears... And burned men. All right. So what happened was I changed the name to Burned Men because I wanted them to be Burned Men, not Painted Dogs. I left the model as being Painted Dogs, but uh, apparently I changed the other stuff. So these guys will now be called Burned Men. There. Got to restart this. So yeah, I, I will say this: if you're modding, listening to something on an audiobook is actually really nice because you don't really need to focus that much on the work because it's kind of tedious. So having the audiobook going in the background is actually kind of fun. So region rosters, the wall, I want to be House Royce, you be the Stormlands, you be Team 1, I'll be Team 2. There we go. So now as you can see, the unit card is in-game. It actually looks pretty nice. Right, I think it looks nice at least. And yeah, it's small enough that it doesn't really bother you. And then let's give you... Uh, maybe some writers. There. That should do it. And start her up. So yeah, the, um, this should be a nice little battle here. It'll just give you a little peek at uh, the wall, the battlefield and whatnot. And yeah, I'll be doing the massive battle preview pretty soon for the, uh, like for House Royce or and the, uh, House Aaron and the Iron Islands. But yeah. Anyways, this here is the wall. As you can see, you can basically go like right up next to it. There is like you can just you know be entrenched up against it, which is kind of nice, I think. And then yeah, it just goes up and up and up. I, I'm not sure if you can actually even see the top of it if you go to the edge of the battle map. Uh, I guess you, you kind of can up there. So yeah, let's deploy a bit further up just so we can actually get some fighting going on here. And then here's all these uh, Stormland knights. Who are running away? What? What are you doing? No, you're supposed to be charging and yelling, Stannis, Stannis, Stannis. I mean, come on. Oh, well, what can you do? Anyways, yeah, I, I modified it so that the text, like the terrain up here in the north is going to be always snowy. And I'm kind of proud of that. And, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to be including the stuff north of the wall, but this is just like a battlefield, a battle map battlefield and stuff. And you, you theoretically can get north of the wall if you try. It's just, just there's nothing up there, so yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll hope to expand it in a patch later. But anyways, that there is about it. Um, this battle looks like it'll be pretty boring and I'll probably lose it, so let's not go and watch it. But either way though, yeah, these are some plans of the Vale, and I hope to see you soon. Admiral Thrawn, signing off.